Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and today I want to share with you guys a really cool trap line that you can play against the Pierce defense. This one's really cool because, first of all, even if they don't fall for the trap, you get a really good position with white. But second of all, if you use the Lee Chess database, and this is actually how I noticed this opening, you'll notice that about 70% of the time, if you get this position on the board, black will fall for a trap. So there's a really good chance if you get here that you're going to be able to win this game immediately. And something really cool happened happened this week. I actually did a stream on Twitch. You can come and find me. I'm Vampire Chicken if you like to uh, to watch live streams. And I made a, a little bit of a lecture. I did a little bit of a stream where I talked about this opening. But that's not the cool part. The cool part is I woke up the next morning and one of my viewers named Nikos, who's about 1900 rated on leechess.org, he said, hey man, I caught the stream last night and I already got to use your trap and I was able to beat a grand master. And he was really happy and I thought that was really cool. So I actually want to take the time and share his game with you guys uh it's a really good model game for how this trap can get you a, a lot of points and you can beat even really strong players with it so thanks a lot nikos for sending it in before we get to the game though i do want to just share a few things about the opening um, because this is a slightly problematic opening to be facing in that uh there's so many different move orders so the true pierce move order uh, at least to my mind is something like e4 d6 d4 knight f6 knight c3 g6 here i'm recommending this move bishop to g5 not the most popular move but there's a million different setups that white can choose from against this opening this is actually known as the burn variation uh one of many 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 possibilities for white but this trap only works in this exact position after bishop to g7 so some argument could be made that this already is a mistake by black that just a simple development um, already leads to a very difficult position. So uh, the problem is really that there's so many different move orders that are very similar. Your opponent might play some sort of modern where they just play g6 on move one, um, and then they don't commit one of these pieces, or maybe they're going to play d6, but they're going to play c6 early. Maybe they're just going to develop the bishop first, or they're just going to bring out the knight first. There's a lot of different uh, nuances in the, the first few moves here that will make it so that we don't get it. But if we get this exact position and we play the move pawn to e5, we might be in luck here. So with all of that in mind, let's actually jump over to Nico's game. They got there by an interesting transposition, and this is the kind of thing that can happen in this opening. Um, so their game went e4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, only now came d4, d6, bishop to g5 and i think here he was probably hoping for knight to f6 because in this exact position we know that we can play the move pawn to e5 which by the way is not the most popular way for white to continue usually white plays queen to d2 and then they get castled long if black gets castled uh you know maybe we'll be able to chuck our, our pawns at them and, and have the, one of these like attacking games so this is actually the typical way of playing which is why e5 might come as a surprise to quite a lot of players and here, most players will take on e5, which is already, I don't know, slightly dubious. Um, it's worth noting that in the master database, so if you take a look at the strongest players playing, there's actually a model game that looks to be very successful for black. Um, the game Vugar Gashimov versus uh, Vasily Ivanchuk actually continued slightly different. So we should take just a quick brief detour um, down this different road before we come and we look at the trap. Potentially, this is a way that really strong, well-prepared players will be playing. And in the game, Black actually won. So this is uh, there's a lot of stuff here to potentially avoid. In the game, White continued with f4, which I do think is kind of the critical move here. But it is worth noting, I think there's also just a simple way for White to play. So I'm only going to show one variation here. I think a simple and just clean approach um, to get kind of an easy position here with white is to just simply take on d6, exploiting the pin on the e-file. After they take back, you just follow up with queen to d2 with the simple idea that we're going to get castled. And if black ever goes this way, we're going to just follow it up with like h4, h5 and try to get some sort of massive attack. And this looks just like a Sicilian dragon, but black for some reason has decided to put the knight back on d7. Looks a little bit weird, so I like white's chances. For example, if they castle, they're like already in trouble. Uh, h4 is a particularly deadly move because, for example, if they, even if they play h5, you can chuck g4 at them. If they take, you just keep powering through and something like this will be massively, massively strong for white. 
Okay, obviously black can play a little bit better than that, but uh, I, I think that's a simple solution. You can also take a look at F4 if you want to play some of the critical lines. But let's get back to our main action here. Uh, so E5 was played, and now, you know, when you see this, you get really excited with the white pieces because D takes E5, D takes E5, and just about everybody is going to be taking on D1, which looks totally normal. You know, whenever that D file opens up, very often it's a good idea to trade the queens. But rook takes D1, and if knight to G4, uh, this is actually already losing for black. So can black actually do anything to improve? Well, uh, we're going to come back and take a look at the trap, but maybe this is a slightly better try. Knight F to D7. Um, but here you have a strong continuation, and the idea is knight to d5. This asks um, a really tough question of black. How are you going to defend the c-pawn? Obviously, you're not going to be able to play knight to a6, because simply we'd be removing the defender of the c-pawn, and black will just be losing some material here. But in this line, black has one idea, which is bishop takes e5. This now actually leads to a kind of cool tactical uh, reply by white. White is definitely at least better here if you know this little tactic. And it begins with the move knight to f3, attacking the bishop. The bishop needs to stay connected to the c-pawn. So the bishop goes to d6, and here's a little bit of a, of a tactic. If you do spot this move, you will get a winning position with white. Um, the move, you can pause, obviously, if you don't see it. This is a cool tactic to see. It's bishop takes e7. <laughs> I'm removing the defender, so we're hoping that the bishop takes back. We take on c7, and we land this fork, winning some material with white. So even this doesn't really save black completely. Um, so most players, though, they are going to be playing knight to g4, and this, remarkably, is even worse. So, obviously, we could continue with knight to d5, just going right for this pawn. And this actually will be very similar and very strong, but a even stronger, more accurate move here is what Nico played, h3. The idea is that after the knight recaptures on e5, now there's no longer, um, there's no longer this bishop that can come to e5 and defend the c-pawn. So now knight d5 comes, and it's really, really hard for black to defend this c-pawn. In the game, knight a6 was played. Bishop takes a6. Uh, b takes. Now comes knight to c7. And after king to f8, Nico unfortunately missed a chance to checkmate a grandmaster in only 12 moves here. Um, could have played, obviously. <laughs> Rook to d8. But instead was caught up and decided to grab this knight on a8. So, eh, sad that he missed it. And I actually got a little bit worried when I saw this game. I mean, obviously, I knew the result. But sometimes, if you don't find mates in one against grandmasters, you know, somehow things can turn around. But Nico played well enough from here. So we'll, we'll see how the game finished real briefly. Um, f6 gave this check. He decided to simplify. Bishop to f4. Um, the knights started hopping around, kind of pestering the pawns. And at some point, there were some, some real nice tactics here. So obviously, white is up a significant amount of material, decides to give up a rook for the knight. Probably not the best, but white is so winning. You can do whatever you want. Here, there was some kind of cool ways. He found sort of a nifty way to make sure that he was trading. He just traded down, traded down, traded down. Uh, played really well from here. So even though he didn't spot the mate in one, he was able to get this completely winning position and defeat a grandmaster. So congrats to Nico. <laughs> he also allowed the, the double queening, made it a little bit scary, but white was always uh, winning in this game. So hey, huge congrats to Nico. This was a really well-played game, and I'm glad you were able to share this with us. Hopefully some people liked, uh, liked the trap here that I showed. And if you're one of the people that actually made it all the way to the end of this video, I have a really cool surprise. Those that actually watch all the way, all the videos, uh, you guys are the real ones. You guys are I really appreciate everyone that stays till the end. So I've got a present for you, a brand new hit single. So I'm going to drop another song. This is my brand new single. I'm dropping a hot track here on YouTube. Usually I drop these live on Twitch first, but we're dropping a track on YouTube. Uh, so thanks for watching the entire video. I hope you enjoy the song. If you're not already a subscriber of the channel, come on. What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. And DJ. Oh, no. Oh, no. DJ. <laughs> DJ, hit that track! Hey! Hey!